So, question number 10 is for £32,000. Here it is. Which city hosted the 1968 Summer Olympic Games? Mexico City, Munich, Montreal, Moscow. Um, well, it's either Mexico or oh. Munich. I was going to say Montreal. You were going to say what? I was, Mexico or Montreal, I was going to say, but... 1968. 68. You've got no lifelines. I know. 68. Well, take your time. Take as long What's as you need. The, um... What? When was the... It was uh... on in the morning, because we used to have it on at breakfast time. If it was on in the morning, Mexico. And if it was Mexico, if it was on in the morning, it would be Mexico. But it might not have been '68. It may not have been. It's every four years. It's every four years, yeah. I think there was one in '68. Take your time. This is quite interesting, actually. It was on in the morning. No, Judy thinks it was on in no, the morning. No, no, that was Tokyo. Yeah. Tokyo's not in it. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> That's the day. Trust me on this. Tokyo will not be an answer. Uh, Take your definitely time. Definitely not Moscow. It's not. It's music, definitely is not it? Montreal. <laughs> Oh, well, I don't know. Mexico, I think, but... If you're wrong, you lose £15,000. If you're right, it guarantees you at least £32,000. Well, I'll, I'll gamble, but it's you I'm worried about. It's you she's worried about, David. I think we'll gamble. Are you sure? Yeah. Is that a final answer? Are you sure it can't be the other? I don't think it's Montreal. What about Munich or Moscow? I don't think it's definitely not Moscow because that Alan Wells won the 100 metres, and it, that was definitely in the 70s. I think it's Mexico, and I think we should go with Mexico. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're frightening me, the two of you. Me too. Got to play this thing. Yeah, Mexico. Final answer. Final answer, Chris. Judy. David, you just guaranteed to go away with at least 32,000. <laughs> oh, well played. <laughs> For someone who didn't like the show, David. Oh, God. You're getting the taste of it now, aren't you? No, I've gone right off it now. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I tell you what, your logic was absolutely bang on. It's right answer, Mexico City. Now, listen. Unfortunately, David, bad news here, because Judy was the one who made the phone call. Judy did fast his finger. <laughs> Judy's now got this... Take it. It's yours. What are you going to do with it? You've got £32,000. You, you want to take it? I'll share, because I'm being a nursery teacher. I tell the boys to share all day long, so I'll have to share with my husband. To... I've got many witnesses here. <laughs> we have a lot of witnesses. <laughs> I don't want to take you have it. about 10 million witnesses. I wouldn't worry. You don't want to take no. it? What do I do, what do, I do with it? Put it over here? Yeah. yeah. I'll put it there for safekeeping. Thank you. Coo. How do you feel? Stressed. <laughs> Stressed. <laughs> Uh, what does that mean? 32 grand. Yeah, it's, it's fabulous. It's absolutely terrific. OK. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Will you watch the show in future, David? I will. I will. With real sympathy for all the contestants. <laughs> <laughs> right, you guarantee that cheque there for £32,000. You're five away from one million. This is question number 11 of a possible 15. Who was the father of Charles I of England? James the First, Henry the Fifth, Richard the Second, William the Third. Now it's worth sixty-four thousand pounds. You might as well play this. Take as long as you need. Well, I think it's James the First, but I think it's James the but First. We don't know anything about history, so. Do Hang we? on, you think it's James the First, but you know nothing about history. It's just, I just feel it's James the First. <laughs> Feel it's James the first. Well, I think we should go for it because we have Oh, yeah, we've got absolutely nothing to lose. Absolutely. Just think about it. James the first. Henry the fifth. Richard the second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. David, you're getting hysterical. It... Why are you laughing? You're getting hysterical. <laughs> I've been having to think about it, so I'm thinking about it. Take your time. Take as long as you need. It's I don't think it's Richard the second. second. It's not William the second. It's not well, Henry the fifth. Well, it's going James the first then. I just think about it sensibly for a minute. Did you have a clue? We've got nothing to lose. Mm. Oh, James the first. I, I really don't know. 
we'll go, we'll go with James the first, but it's just a haunch or hunch. It's just a haunch. Yes. Or hunch. <laughs> You want to play this? Final answer? Yeah, yes, final answer. Do. James the first. Yeah. You had £32,000. It's the right answer. You got £64,000. Yeah. 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 Happy Christmas! Yeah. Yeah. Well done! Yeah. Well done! Yeah. Oh, I can't stretch out any longer. That is brilliant. Oh, my God. Well done. Have a look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, you're shaking. I know. You've got 11 right out of a possible 15. You've got £64,000. If you go for the next question, you've still got £32,000. But you would lose 32 of the 64 you've got at this moment. You can walk away with £64,000. The next question is worth £125,000. Who wrote his Anatomy, Descriptive and Surgical, published in 1858? Joseph Lister, Henry Gray, William Harvey, Louis Pasteur. Now it's worth £125,000. I think it's Joseph Lister, but I'm not going to gamble on it, David. I'm not that sure. Well... It's not Pasteur, I'm sure. I've never heard of Henry Gray. What are thinking, David? I was hoping the um, answer would be in the question because I can't see it in the answers. <laughs> <laughs> um. You were hoping the answer would be in the question because you can't see it in the answers. Yeah. I wouldn't have said Lister. Not that I know Lister. Who would you have said? Pasteur. But... but they're both medical, aren't they? But I can't think what they did. Why did you say it can't be Pasteur? Because I thought Pasteur was, was medicine, but some particular part of it. But maybe Joseph of Lister. And what about Lister well. then? I know, maybe he is too. But it could be one of the others. Henry Gray or. I think we should call it a day. We've done so well. Yeah. Chris, you've been a fantastic host. And your you people are so are... full of it. <laughs> David, you are full of it. Well, you have. <laughs> You've surprised even me. <laughs> <laughs> Final answer. You want to take the money? Yes. Final answer. Thank you. Okay, give him a big hand. David and Judy Cairns go away. £64,000. Well played. Just before you go, if you'd been on 32, so you thought, well, let's risk it, what would you, how would you have shaken down? Who'd have gone for what in the end? I would have gone for Lister. Would you have been overruled, David? Um, yeah, this is Judy's show. I, I would have um, <laughs> gone with Judy. Um, be very interesting that because the right answer was actually Henry Gray. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a big hand, sixty-four thousand pounds. Bless you guys. Thank, Thank you. So you. Good luck. Oh, what a nice couple, Judy and David. They're going back to Newcastle. Judy with a check for sixty-four thousand pounds, and David with a newfound love for this show. Who wants to be a millionaire? Now we have ten brand new couples, all keen to get into the hot seat tonight and play together for one million pounds. Let's meet them. They are <laughs> William Ann from North Lanarkshire, Linda and Mark from Kent, Chris and Anita from Glasgow, David and Christine from Wiltshire, Chris and Jules from London. Andrea and Peter from South Yorkshire. Cliff and Catherine from Middlesex. Dave and Jill from Staffordshire. Lawrence and Rachel from West Sussex. Matt and Liz from the West Midlands. OK, ten couples, twenty contestants. Here we go, then, guys. Fastest finger first. Whoever puts the four answers in the correct order in the fastest time is next tonight to play for a possible £1 million between them. Audience nice and quiet, please. Let them concentrate. Fastest finger first, here comes the question. Starting with the earliest, put these works of literature in the order they were first written. Moby Dick, Beowulf, Train Spotting, Brideshead Revisited. Don't 
to get the one representing the couple who actually is doing fastest finger first is the one who made the call. This is the right order then. Uh, farthest back in time, Beowulf, something around 700 AD, I remember it well. Uh, Moby Dick, uh, 1851. Then Bride said it was 1945 when it was written. Train spotting most recent, 1993. That's the right order now. Ten couples start. Let's see how many got it right out of ten. Uh, one, two, three, four. Who was fastest? Cliff and Catherine in 4.50 seconds. <laughs> the break, Cliff. Now, the worst Catherine. Let's have a look. She's a crunchy. Okay. Well, they're all waving. I look over a million pounds, Catherine. Might as well. Yes, please. You can come as well if you like. Cliff Darcy, a marketing manager from Twickenham in Middlesex, and his wife Catherine. Now, despite being married to a very own Mr. Darcy, Catherine knows him better as Bunny Number Two. <laughs> While Cliff, in turn, calls Catherine Bunny Number One, as she's the one in charge of the family, which also includes a third bunny. You told us this stuff. Bunny <laughs> Number Three, their sixth month old son, Callum. There he is. <laughs> ah, seen here doing his bath time impression of Ace Ventura with the quiff. Uh, Cliff and Catherine met at university, married in New Zealand, where they spent their wedding night engaged in a filthy nocturnal practice, bird watching, in the mud in the hope of catching sight of a kiwi. Cliff says Catherine's here tonight to calm him down as he tends to be very impulsive. Uh, once on a whim, he bought a widescreen TV for their tiny living room, and it was so big they both got seasick watching it <laughs> and had to take it back. This is a true story, isn't it? It's, it's absolutely true. It was a really good value. It was something like £99 for this great big TV. We took it home. We were, our noses were practically touching the screen. <laughs> and, uh, and you're just watching it. We just felt queasy all the time because you felt like you were in the movie. Oh. So it had to go back. So it's gone back? Oh, yes. Did you get your 99 quid back? Oh, we're, oh yes. And I oh, bought, yes. bought a much smaller TV. Learned my lesson. How's it going to work then, Catherine? I mean, are you really going to be able work. to control this creature? I'm going to try. Because he, I mean, otherwise he could blow the lock, couldn't he? He basically. could. He could very he, easily blow the lock. It's often done, often yeah. done. I quite often get a question wrong and blow it. Well, don't. I mean, serious, it's serious money. You've just seen a couple go away, £64,000. Yeah. A handsome sum. It is great. How long have you been married, you two? How long have you been together? Uh, five, five years, but we've been together 14 years. Good grief. I'm actually about 60, but <laughs> don't look it. Yeah? Yeah? Sorry, the surprise being. <laughs> How much has the arrival of little Callum changed your lives? It's been the most fantastic experience, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. You know, you, I don't think I knew what happiness or joy was until he came along. It was the, absolutely, it's been the best six months of my life. I can relate to that, absolutely. OK, well, now, fingers crossed tonight, they are just 15 questions away from one million pounds. Bunny number one and bunny number two. Now, remember, I need you to agree on all your decisions, including your final answer, you two. OK, you have your three lifelines. Uh, if you get stuck, you've got 50-50, you've got phone a friend, and, of course, you can ask this audience. Lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, question number one. Now, don't be impulsive. Wait for it to come up. <laughs> OK, question number one is for £100. Here it is. Which of these is the title of a 1969 biker film starring Dennis Hopper and Peter Fonda? Lazy Rider. Dozy Rider. Sleazy Rider. Easy Rider. Easy Rider. Easy Rider. That's so, right, answer. you got £100. <laughs> Question number two for 200 quid. Someone who drastically alters his opinion of something is said to have had a change of what? Scene. Heart. Socks. <laughs> underwear. I wish I could change my underwear, but... I think we uh, all do, please. <laughs> it's heart. It's heart. heart. It's heart is the right answer. You've got 200 quid. <laughs> Question number three for 300 pounds. Here it comes. Which of these is the name of a plant? Wolf scarf. Fox glove. Squirrel hat. Rabbit socks. Uh, I'm just imagining what a squirrel hat looks like. Um, fox glove. Right answer, 300 pounds, we'll play. <laughs> don't worry me well, isn't it, so far? Do you believe you're here yet? People say, I don't really believe I'm here. I feel much more relaxed now than I did two minutes ago when, when I had to stand up and walk over and, and meet you. It's weird. What, me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people have said that. God, you're weird. <laughs> you got £300. This is for £500. Here it is, question number four. What is a common name for lodgings? Spades. Scoops. 
balls. Digs. Digs. Digs, Chris. Right, Alice, you got 500 pounds. <laughs> right, you're one away from the guaranteed thousand. You have all three lifelines. Here it is. This is question number five. You're 11 away from a million. Here it is. What is the world's tallest waterfall? Angel Falls. Saint Falls. Cherub Falls. Seraphim Falls. We, we've often talked about um, going to this country to see these. It's, it's Angel Falls. Angel Where Falls. Where What country? Uh, I think it's Venezuela. They are in Venezuela. It's the right answer. You're going to pass. Problem at all so far, they've got a £1,000 guaranteed anyway, which is good. Have a look at number six for £2,000. Which of these is a word for a man who seduces many women? Lorimer, Lothario, Loper, Lozenge. I've no idea because I thought it would say Tarrant. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, darling, if you're watching, it's a joke. <laughs> it's Cliff's little way. Lothario. So right now, you've got 2,000. <laughs> Question number seven, have a look. £4,000. Just be aware this is where it starts to go up a bit steeply. The drops get a bit steep. At the moment, you'd lose 1,000. This is for £4,000. You haven't touched the lifeline yet. You've got all three. Question number seven. How many members were there in the original 1980s girl group Banana Rama? Two. Three, four, five. Any ideas? You don't want to. Got an idea. Can you have? Can you name them? That would be very impressive. I mean, that was just a roar. You don't have to name them. <laughs> so tell me how many of them there were. I would say three, but I'm not certain. What would you say, Cliff? I think it's three as well. You want to risk it? Go for three. I can only think of three. There was the one with the dark hair, uh -huh. one with the long blonde hair, uh -huh. and one with shorter blonde hair. And those are the only three I can think of. Okay, three, Chris. <laughs> You're being very impulsive. She's trying to be very calm. Okay, right. Do you, are you, you sure? You can't. Because you. I think on my screen. Can you, can you see any? Can you see any other members? Is there anybody else wondering about? No, there's no one else wondering. Not a tall redhead or a short <laughs> blonde or anything. No? Three. Three. Okay, three, Chris. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You got four thousand pounds. I thought it was free immediately. <laughs> so don't panic. You still haven't used a lifeline. You got four thousand pounds. You got fifty-fifty phone and phone. Ask the audience left. You're eight away from a million. This is for eight thousand pounds. Have a look at it. You can double your money here. You've got all three lifelines. Here it comes. Adelaide is the capital of which Australian state? Western Australia, Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia. What now, what do you think? You were down there in New Zealand, but no, did you go to we, Australia? No, we haven't been to Australia, no. Any idea? You're usually quite good at this, aren't you? Um, you got three lifelines. You got 4,000 pounds. What are you thinking? Well, I know it's not Western Australia because that's Perth. Yeah. Can we ask the audience, please, Chris? You can. Audience on your keypads, please. This is worth £8,000. Obviously, Cliff, Catherine, don't have to take their answer. See what happens. This is the question. On your keypads, Adelaide is the capital of which Australian state? Now, A on your keypad is Western Australia. B is Victoria. C is New South Wales. D is South Australia. All vote now. Twenty-five percent say Victoria, uh, thirty-seven percent say New South Wales, uh, thirty-four percent say South Australia. Can you visualise it? Is that helped you at all? No. Probably not. Can you think where it is? What are you thinking, Cliff? I'm thinking. We were just trying to think where it is in <laughs> on the map, but we can't think. Ah, <laughs> that's not good. Take your time. It's worth eight thousand pounds. You can still do a fifty-fifty, and you can phone a friend. It's all going too well, wouldn't it? Mm. Take your time, you've got your lifelines. Where's New South Wales? No. 
Adelaide, Victoria, Adelaide, New South Wales, Adelaide, South Australia. I think it's C. What's your instinct? C. New South Wales. I really haven't got a clue. Nor have I, really. Do you want to you got two use another lifeline? Maybe don't want to. Cliff, what you can do? You've got two lifelines. Adelaide is the capital of which Australian state? Western Australia, Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia. It's I worth don't, eight thousand. I don't know where it is, Hum. Don't know. Yeah. Okay, let's go fifty-fifty, shall we? Yeah, because we yeah. don't know. Okay, no can you take away two wrong answers. Leave Cliff and Catherine with the right answer and one remaining random wrong answer. When the lights came on, they were very strange looking people. <laughs> Adelaide is the capital of Victoria, Adelaide, Victoria, Adelaide, South Australia. Good thinking, Adelaide Catherine. Victoria. The two. You don't have to play this, you can walk away with 4,000, you can phone a friend. Well, South Australia, I mean, is that, where's Sydney? Is, is that in South Australia? I don't know. It's New South Wales, isn't it? Let's go Victoria, shall we? Get it wrong, get it wrong. <laughs> I have no idea what to do. What you want to do? Mr. Impulsive, what you can do? I'm going to have to fail, aren't we? Because we can't afford to get it wrong. Yeah. You should be fine. Your dad's been to Australia, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. I don't know if he'd know, though. Okay. I don't know if he'd know the States. OK. We're going to have to phone, aren't we? We've we got we Mike and Archie. Let's phone Martin, shall we? Go on, then. Can we phone uh, Martin, please? OK, mm -hmm. who's Martin? Uh, he's a buddy from college. Australian person? No, he isn't, no. no. Okay, where's he? Where is he? He's uh, down in Portsmouth. Okay, we'll he's in him. the Navy. Uh, we call him two possibilities. Uh, it's up to you whether or not you take his answer. Hello? Martin? Hello? Hello, it's Chris Tarrant here. Good evening. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Martin, I've got Cliff and Catherine here. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're doing fine. We're on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, but they're stuck. Uh, right. They're doing OK. They're on £4,000. The next question is worth £8,000 to them. Right, yeah. OK. Martin, next question here will be Cliff's. 30 seconds to tell you the question. There are only two possible answers. One of these is worth £8,000. All right, mate? OK. OK, 30 seconds. Fingers crossed. Cliff, your time starts now. Martin? Yeah? Adelaide is the yep. capital of which Australian state? Adelaide is the capital... Adelaide. What, what have you got? Victoria or South Australia? Um, Adelaide. Victor yeah, I'm not entirely certain, mate. I'd go for... What was it? What was the options again? Victoria or South Australia? Uh, I'd go South Australia, but I'm not certain, mate. I'm not sure. I wouldn't put my, more, my life or your money on it. OK, South Australia. Thanks, Martin. OK, mate? Yeah. Then, bye. Fingers crossed. I'll go, I'll go with Martin. South Australia. Catherine? Yeah, OK. Final answer. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £8,000. Oh. So, how are we feeling then, Cliff? Frustrated, because I thought to myself a few weeks ago, I, I always get these Australian questions wrong. I must learn those capitals, the states and their capitals. But, you know, busy you life. Can't, but, I mean, people talk about trying to research for this show. You can't do it. There's tens of thousands of questions in the computer. Yeah. The number of questions is infinite, and your knowledge is very small in comparison, so... Well, now, listen, you've got £8,000. That'd be handy. This is for £16,000. It's question number nine. Have a look at it. Tell us what you want to do. Which Italian city is home to the football team Juventus? Florence. Turin. Rome. Milan. Now, Catherine, are you up on your football? No, I'm hopeless at football. Ah. And Cliff, living in Twickenham, you're a rugby fan? Yes, I am, yeah. Um, Bit of a waste, really, on this one. <laughs> We've got no lifelines, so... You've got no lifelines, you've got £8,000. If you give me a wrong answer, you lose seven. So, I, if I had to phone a friend, I'd know someone that would know this instantly. Um, it's not Florence. I don't think it's uh, Milan, because there's Inter Milan. Was Juventus? Is it Rome? There's Roma, is in Rome. 
Turin, Rome. Should you go for Rome? I've got no idea. I just, it's just not coming to me. So I think it's not Florence. Slow down. It's not Florence. What's Slow down. Florence? It's really then? nice. Slow down. I, it doesn't Slow matter. Down. I know it's not Florence. Okay. I can't tell you anything more than that. It's Turin. No, it just doesn't sound right. You Milan. don't have to play this question. I'm sure Juventus. I'm, you know, if you think about home derbies in football, I think Roma Juventus is a home derby. I mean, I, I can't be sure, but. I can't add anything because no. I don't know. Do you want to go for it? Should we gamble it? If you're happy to do that. I think it's Rome. Should we go for it? Go on then. OK, Rome, Chris. Final answer. Final answer. You had £8,000. Cliff, Catherine, you've just lost £7,000. <laughs> the right answer is Turin. Give them a big hand, they still go away. £1,000 better off with Craig Dyson. Ah, they have the right instinct, but they, uh, they got it wrong. Cliff and Catherine Darcy, bunny number two and bunny number one go back to Twickenham. Uh, with tonight's check, for, still for £1,000. Now, we've got nine pairs of players left. Fastest finger first again, four answers. One correct order. Nice and quiet in the audience, please. Here comes the next question. Starting with the earliest, put these singers in the order they had their first UK number one single. Brian Adams, Ricky Martin, Mungo Jerry, Shaking Stevens. It's one of our contestants here going, oh no. We'll see, we'll see. This is the right order. Four artists in the right order. Uh, Mungo Jerry was farthest back, uh, 1970 in the summertime. Uh, Shaking Stevens, 81, This Old House. Uh, then Brian Adams, uh, number one, Everything I Do, I Do It For You, went on for months and months and months at number one. And the most recent, Ricky Martin, uh, 1999, Living La Vida Loca. That's the right order. Now, nine left. How many got it right? These got it right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, uh, who was five? Andrea and Peter in 5.36 seconds. Andrea, it's you! It's you! You are absolutely bewildered. I am. You, Andrea? I am. In Peter? He is. OK. Peter, you've got to play for a million pounds. Sorry, but you have to be done. Come on up. Good luck, Pete. Right, here we go. This is Andrea Smith, a nurse from Rotherham in South Yorkshire, and husband Peter. Andrea works in a renal unit, and the first time she met Peter is when he came in for treatment for kidney trouble. Uh, while he was having dialysis, Peter enchanted her with offers of a ride on the back of his motorbike. <laughs> After a first outing to Derbyshire and a romantic trip to a steam rally, they finally got together. They are 15 questions away from £1 million. They have three brand-new lifelines. 50-50, phone a friend and ask this audience. Right, let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? So, question number one. For £100, here it comes. Which of these is associated with young children? Shove chair. Push chair. Press chair. Ram chair. Push chair. <laughs> Good answer, Pete. £100. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two for 200 quid. Here it comes. What are you said to do to the roof when you make a lot of noise? Paint it. Raise it. Thatch it. Retile it. Raise it. Raise it's the right answer. You've got 200 pounds. <laughs> Okay, you have all three lifelines. Look at this, question number three for 300 quid. Which of these is an expert in a particular subject? Pundit, bandit, chindit, dimwit. Pundit, pundit, isn't it? It's a pundit. Must have both your answers. It's a pundit. It's a pundit. It's the right answer, you've got 300 quid. <laughs> Thank you.
No problem so far, just be aware, Andrew and Pete, if you give me a wrong answer, going up to 1,000, you would go home with nothing at all, which would be disastrous. Last thing I want to happen to you, it won't happen, you've got all those lifelines. Question number four is for £500. Pom is the French word for which fruit? Cherry, apple, beach, lemon. Apple. Apple. Yeah. Final answer? Yeah. yeah. It's good, it's the right answer, you've got £500. <laughs> Okay, question number five would guarantee you're going back to Rotherham with a thousand pounds. Here it is. Which of these was a ravenous video game character of the 1980s? Why are you nodding at me, Andrea? I think I know it. What, what is it? What's going to come up? I think it's Pac Man. Okay, see what I happens. Think. Rack Man. <laughs> Pac Man. Back Man. Mac Man. Yeah. Pac Man. That's so right, Alice. You got one thousand pounds guaranteed. Have all three lifelines. Oh, kissy, kissy! Uh, you've got a thousand pounds. You're ten away from one million. You have all three lifelines. Question number six is for two thousand pounds. Triads are secret societies originating in which country? Pete's nodding happily. What do you want to see come up on the screen? China. Zimbabwe. Uruguay. Bulgaria. China. 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 Final answer. Yeah. yeah. It's the right answer. You've got two thousand pounds. You've got all your lifelines, which is good. Question number seven is for four thousand pounds. Take your time. Have a look at each of these. And you're nine away from a million. Here it is. What was the surname of Sam, the ex-baseball pitcher who ran the bar in the TV sitcom Cheers? Riley. Malone. Yes. Sullivan. Clancy. It's Malone. Malone. Yeah. Leader? Yeah. yeah. Final answer. Yes, yeah. it was on Brazier, wasn't it? Yeah, we're on. Yeah. Brazier, yeah. Malone. Yeah. It's the right answer. You got four thousand pounds. <laughs> Have a look at question number eight. The money now is starting to go up a bit steeper. The drops are steep as well. Peter, Andrew, you lose three thousand pounds if you give me a wrong answer. You have got all those lifelines intact. This is question number eight. It's worth eight thousand pounds. In total, how many countries border the Netherlands? Two, three, four, five. That's worth eight thousand pounds. Take your time. France, Belgium. I think it's three, but it might be four. I don't what know do where Luxembourg is. Germany, uh, France. Belgium, but there's Luxembourg there as well, yeah, and I don't know. Down, don't you? You've got sort of Holland there and Germany coming round. I think it might be four actually. I'm gonna have to ask the audience on this, aren't I? You got three life You got a 50 50. I do ask the audience ask then. The audience, uh... Go on then, yeah, we'll ask the audience we'll ask on the audience. this one. Yeah. OK, audience on your keypads, please. Let's try and get Andrea and Peter up to £8,000. They've got 4000 at the moment. This is the question. In total, how many countries border the Netherlands? A, B, C or D? All vote now. Uh, 53% are saying four, 37% say three. Now, what you can do? You lose £3,000 here if you're wrong. You got a 50-50 if you want. Yeah. And hope that we don't end up with three and four. Uh, I think it is four because yeah. Germany. Uh, Germany comes around the back of it, doesn't yeah. it? And France is up, up underneath <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Belgium is stuck to its side, and I think... <laughs> Luxembourg is sort of in between. Should we do 50-50? Go on, we'll, uh, we'll do uh... We might as well, we're yeah, not in the way now, are we? No, you're not. Go on, 50-50. Okay. Computer, take away two wrong answers. Leave Andrew and Peter the right answer, and one remaining random wrong answer. That's four. That's it, four, uh, definitely. 
Not two. No. No. no Final four. answer. I'm yeah. sure it's four then. Yeah. Yeah. It's the wrong answer. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. The right answer is two. Actually, border the Netherlands. Sorry, it's the wrong Never answer. Mind. The audience were wrong as well. The right answer is only two. Actually, border the Netherlands. Bum. Bum is the word. Mm -hmm. They still go away. One thousand pounds better off than when you came in. Bless Thank you, guys. You. I'm really sorry. Bless <laughs> oh. okay, you. Here comes the next question tonight. Starting with the earliest, put these athletes in the order they first won an Olympic gold medal. Bob Beeman, Jesse Owens, Carl Lewis, Morris Green. Okay, eight couples left. This is the right order then, first and foremost. Uh, farthest back in time, Jesse Owens, 1936. Then it was Bob Beeman in 68. Then it was Carl Lewis in uh, 84. Then it was Morris Green in 2000. That's the right order for Olympic gold medalists. Now, how many got it right out of our remaining eight? Uh, one, two, three. Who was fastest? Chris and Anita in 6.95 seconds. Christopher, well played. <laughs> and let's have a look at Anita. Are you ready, Anita? Hello. Okay, let's go for a million pounds. There we go again. This is Chris Rennie, a store manager from Glasgow, and his fiancée, Anita Anderson, back at home, being looked after by Granny Susan, is their seven-year-old son, Scott. Chris and Anita are here tonight after making just one call when Anita apparently sent a telepathic message to Chris <laughs> to ring the show. And he did. That's true, isn't it? That is true. You were watching uh -huh. Millionaire? Uh-huh. And what, you had an instinct? Yeah, well, I was, I was about to say, Chris, uh, why don't you give it a quick phone? And then I, I decided against it. And I would say uh, four or five minutes past the adverts and then the next show, whatever, started. And Chris stood up and he walked over to the phone and I just mm. knew he was going to phone Millionaire. Nino, Nino, Nino. OK, well, now, listen, let's make a start. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. <laughs> Question number one is for £100. Here it comes. In Britain, which word follows fire for a group of people called out in emergencies? Team. Brigade. Force. Guard. Brigade. Uh, brigade. Brigade's the right answer. Got £100. <laughs> Sometimes the only ones that's so obvious, but that will be the answer. There's no trick questions. Question number two for £200. Which of these is a term for an old horse? Nag. Rag. Bag. Wag. <laughs> Think you know that one yet? No, I have no yeah, idea. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Are you joking? Yeah. I could it's something that you do quite a lot of, yeah? Oh. <laughs> 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 you mean you're that bad? Yeah, it's nag. Nag. Yeah. Have you never heard of it? No, I have. I was kidding on. <laughs> Final answer. Yeah, Final answer. Uh -huh. It's the right answer. You've got £200. <laughs> 